All right, what is up guys? So if you watched my previous video, um, you'll see that I put a drone ESC in my uh, CCV1 crawler and uh, I was crawling on the stock BL Heli firmware and it, it worked okay. Um, but you know, it didn't have that like RPM lock field orientation control, whatever that comes on like the Crawlmaster Mini and the Hobby Wing Fusion. And then so I knew that the AM32 firmware was out there. And, you know, like I said in the previous video, I had four of these ESCs that I took off of a drone. Um, and so I knew I was going to try it. So I ordered the ST linker and then I, I already had the flight controller. That's I'll, I'll get to that. So what this video is going to be, it's kind of going to be like, uh, like tips and tricks, maybe not tricks, just like tips. I'm not going to make a full how to video because there's already like a super comprehensive guide on GitHub, which I'll put in the description. That's the guy that I followed, but there are some things that kind of caused some hangups along the way that were, you know, they were pretty easy for me to figure out just because I'm so familiar with flashing ESCs and flight controllers and whatnot. So that's mostly what this video is going to be about. It's not going to be like a full how-to guide because that already exists, right? So to what you have to do to get AM32 on these is you have to erase the bootloader with the ST-Link and then you have to... Um, flash a new bootloader for AM32 and then you have to flash the target firmware and then the EE prom and I'm going to link all of that stuff in the description so you can just go to it this is just going to be for you know this particular Emacs ESC it's it's not going to be for any other ESC but again if you follow that guide and pay attention to the links um, it's all laid out so to flash or to erase the bootloader, you need to connect to the, um, what are they even called? The SWC and SWD pins. And I'm gonna, so those pins are on the Emacs ESC. They're up here. There's four pads and it's the top two. And so I'm gonna try to solder those on camera because if you guys aren't, if you're not super familiar with soldering or soldering with like thin 30 gauge wire, this is probably, it might not be worthwhile because if you bridge the pads, it's not going to work. Uh, like if you, if you join them with like a solder ball or something. Um, so this, this is probably the hardest part is soldering to these pads. So let me get my iron set up and we'll see if we can get this connected on camera and then I'll kind of run through the process of like the bootloader and all that stuff. All right, just a sec. Okay, so I've got the ESC in my little plastic table vise. Um, you know, they make those like helping hand things too that people use, but you definitely need some way to secure the ESC before you attempt anything like this. And then for my iron, I've just got like a standard chisel tip it, it kind of like resembles a flathead screwdriver, if that'll focus. It's not super small, but I just, for stuff like this, for like these really small pads, I just end up using the side of the tip. And then I've got my temp sent to about 850 degrees Fahrenheit. So that might seem really hot for, you know, such small pads and small wire, but it's good to use a hot iron because it's better to work fast with a lot of heat than slow with less heat because that can actually cause a lot more problems. So this is going to be kind of tricky, but I'm going to try to solder this while reaching around my phone here. Let's see. So I just want to start by tinning these top two pads. Okay, that's one. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't, when they're, when you're using a lot of heat, it doesn't take much at all. So it's, it's having a hard time focusing, but you can kind of see that those, those pads are tin and they're ready for wire. 
so let's see. Okay, so I've got those pads tin, and now I kind of flip the ESC around so I can just hold the wires. And then, and then it doesn't matter what order these wires go on, um, because you can you can reverse them with the uh, connectors on the other side for the uh, the ST linker. Okay, so I've got my wire. Got some solder on my iron. I've never actually tried to solder on camera before. This is insane. I can't reach. Oh my god. Okay, that's a little close, but we'll try to get the second wire on there. So all I'm doing is tapping the wire because it's so hot. I'm just tapping the wire that it like immediately forms a joint. And then you just want to give it like a tiny little tug, not super hard to make sure they're on there. Right. And then we have to connect a ground. All right. So I've got this flipped over again and I'm just going to tack the ground on to the power side. You could use a pin and connect it to the, uh, the servo lead if you had a servo lead on there and it, and it comes with one I just don't have one on there at the moment okay and then that's just attached to ground so now it's ready for the ST linker and to start wiping the bootloader so let me switch things up okay so I've got it hooked up to the ST link and then you'll see the connections on the ST link just kind of follow the diagram and again with the SWC and the SWD if you don't know which those are it's not a big deal you can just reverse them it's not going to hurt anything if you like plug it in backwards and then I've got my um, cube programmer loaded up now the first time I plugged in the ST link I did have to go here to this little firmware upgrade button so I did have to go to this little firmware upgrade button to upgrade the ST link. So it wouldn't connect before that. Now, before we can connect this to the ST M32 cube programmer, we need to power it with a LiPo. This particular ESC doesn't have any LEDs or anything, so it's not gonna do anything when you plug it in. And then we just go over here to the cube programmer and hit connect and then if it says data read failed that's normal because the uh, this cube pr programmer isn't designed to read BL heli so it's not necessarily going to see anything um, now there's another kind of error where it says no STM target found if you get that, that means that the ST link is not communicating with the ESC. So it could be that the wires are crossed. Um, or it could be that you have like a driver issue. Because uh, Jess, you know, the, uh, the owner of Negative G, he's working on this at his house. And um, he had that issue. And when he like switched computers, it started working. So that means it's like some sort of a driver issue. So we can just hit OK. And close this and then we go to option bytes and then and again this is all in the guide uh, readout protection changes to double a and then we go to write protection and check these boxes and scroll down hit apply successfully programmed and then we're gonna go to uh, down here in the bottom left hand corner for a full chip erase, hit OK. So that erased the BL Heli bootloader. And now we're going to go to, so basically now you're starting with like a blank slate. And so we're gonna go to file path. This is where you install the new bootloader, the hex file, and um, the EEPROM. And then let me, so I'm gonna go to the tutorial.
and it's going to list these target addresses. So if you can see that, like this one, this one, and this one, you need to change this each time you upload the different types of files. Okay, so I've got my bootloader. This It was just saved to my hard drive. Um, you know, you hit, here, I'll just show you. You hit browse, and then this is my file for ESC stuff. I've got my file for the bootloader here. Hit open, and then I'm gonna paste that address. Uh, you wanna check skip flash erase, and then check verify programming, and then start program. And that was for the bootloader. And then we're gonna grab the address for the firmware, copy, go back to browse. This is the hex for this particular ESC. Okay, so that was the hex. I'm gonna come over here and grab the address for the EEPROM. And then browse, EEPROM, start address, start program. Okay, and so now that's all done. So it's got the AM32 firmware on it. And so now it's basically ready to be wired up to your truck and to start using. Now I'll show you how I configure it. Okay guys, so now we're done with the ST-Link. For configuration, you need to be connected to the um, the signal wires. So I, I had to actually solder that on because I totally forgot that I was going to need it. <laughs> you need your battery. And then you need a way to connect to the PC through the signal wire. And so if you watched my last video, I'm using a flight controller. All you have to do for the flight controller is solder to one of the motor outputs. And this, this is probably not the cheapest way to do it, but this is what I had uh, in the guide. It's going to give you instructions on how to use an Arduino. So you could go that route, or if you followed my first video and you already have the flight controller, this, this works too. Okay, so if you look on my screen here, I've got this little tiny box on the right. This is the configurator for AM32. You've got your connect button down here. Now, something I figured out that, and it doesn't make sense, but... It's just something I tried. Before I could connect to this, I had to connect to my BL Heli software. So we'll hit connect. And then you'll see this little green progress bar down at the bottom. And then disconnect. And now I gotta go here and switch it to COM3 because you see it automatically pulled up as COM3 and BL Heli. It's like, I don't know if BL Heli just has to open the port for it to communicate but I always have to connect to BL Heli first and then disconnect before I can connect over here. So now we're over here, we hit connect and then go up. It shows four motors because flight controllers have four motor outputs, but we're just gonna hit motor one. Oh, it didn't work, epic fail. All right, sorry guys. Um, I had to go off camera there for a sec. It wasn't connecting because this signal wire that I hooked up, the um, the signal wire was in the wrong spot on the connector, so I had to fix that really quick. Anyway, so what I've been having to do to get this to work through a flight controller is connect to BL Heli. Uh, so we'll just connect, wait for the progress bar, and then disconnect, then come over here to the config tool and hit connect and then hit motor one and then it pulls up all your settings and so now it's connected and ready to use so these are just kind of like the default settings um i don't know what complementary pwm is so i just left that on variable pwm i just left that on um you want bi-directional because uh, that's your reverse. Um, stuck rotor protection, you want that on. You want brake on, stop on. Um, or wait, was it stuck rotor protection? 
no, maybe maybe that stays off and then you turn on stall protection. But there is a guide for all these settings on the GitHub that we can link to. And then we'll select sinusoidal startup. That is your RPM lock. This is what you're looking for. This is why you're flashing this. Sign startup range. That is the percentage that it'll stay in RPM lock before it switches to normal. I'm running this at about 20 on my other ESC, but you can play around with it. Startup power, this is when it switches to normal. I think I have that at like 120. And that's just gonna, like when it switches from RPM lock to normal, that's just gonna prevent it from like cogging. And then your motor KV, set this to whatever, you know, your motor is. I don't, I don't even actually know what that does. Um, my, the motor I'm putting in my new build is 1800, so I'll set that at 1800. For sign mode power, default is five. I would leave that at five, especially for the Emacs ESC. I tried turning that up and it, it damn near cooked the ESC. And, and it'll say that in the guide that be very careful when you're messing with that feature. Uh, and then, so we're gonna go to save settings and you'll see up here it says write successful. And then you wanna go to um, input and turn on your LVC. And then I just crank this all the way up to 350. I'm pretty sure that means 3.5 volts for cell. I mean, that's preference, but just for safety, I don't ever run my batteries that low anyway, but it's, it's just good to have. Um, and then once that's all set, just hit close connection. Uh, I, actually, one more thing. If, if you wire this up, so like, you know, you've got your motor leads over here on the end. If you wire this up and the motor is spinning the wrong way, you can either swap two wires on the ESC itself, or you can come in here and click the reverse rotation. It's the same thing. Okay, so we'll close that. All right, guys, so that's... um. Again, not a full-on guide, but just like a quick like tips on flashing AM32 to the drone ESC. And again, you know, uh, here it is installed on my CCV1. This, this, this thing right here, that's just a Beck. It's huge. You don't need to get one that big. I got some other ones. So I've got these other Becks. They're a lot smaller. I'm going to put those in my next build over there. Um... And this is a 5-volt BEC. It's just to power the receiver. It's not powering the servo because I'm using direct-powered servos. I've got another one right there for my next build. Um, just makes it super clean. And then, so we'll go ahead and plug this in. Now, if you're familiar with, like, the Crawlmaster Mini, you'll you'll recognize that that's a very familiar sound. Um, that's, that's just because they're using the same firmware, but this is kind of, like, what you're looking for from AM32. So, super slow startup, and then it's got that RPM lock, so if I put the radio over here, let's see, you'll notice that it it doesn't stop right um so that's that's kind of what you're looking for and just to kind of go over some other things you'll notice that i don't have like any caps installed from what i know about escs and capacitors typically you're going to want to have a capacitor to protect your entire electronic system from voltage spikes. I've, I've covered I've covered that a lot with drones. Um, I don't totally understand why people are using them on crawlers because crawlers are not high power, high current draw systems. So I don't really see the need for a ton of protection from capacitors. But, you know, there's definitely, you're not going to hurt anything if you install a capacitor. I just didn't do it. Um, cause I didn't see a reason to, as far as temperatures, it's, it's always cold. I, I temp it, I check it constantly. It's, it's always pretty much cold. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to work out fine. I've already got a couple of hours through this ESC running AM 32. Like we crawled a bunch on Sunday and then I've been pretty much crawling every day since. Cause I just love messing around with this stuff. 
So, yeah. <laughs> that is my video on flashing AM32 to a drone ESC. I think you can kind of see that the hardest part is probably the soldering to that... Uh, to that... To those SDW or SWC SWD pins, that's probably the hardest part. the The flashing part with all the different programs, it's a little finicky. But like, if you play around with it enough, you can figure it out. But you know, again, if you're not pretty steady with a soldering iron, um, it might not be a good idea. But if you are, then you know, this is a fifteen dollar ESC. And I've got one in my CCV1, and I'm getting ready to put one in another build. Um, so it's just, you know, if, if it's something you want to attempt, it's just a good way to get that RPM lock without, you know, spending over $100 for an ESC. Again, I'm going to link everything. I'm going to link the guide. I'm going to link all the firmwares and bootloaders and all that stuff in the description. All right, guys, so just had to add something really quick that I found out when I was trying to help Jess set up his flight controller. Um, if you're getting an error where it won't connect automatically to BL Heli, um, it means the firmware on the flight controller needs to be updated. Um, I know this is getting kind of like um, convoluted. And so, you know, the flight controller might not be the best bet, but again, that's just something that I had available. But anyway, um, I'm going to show you how to update it, you know, just in case you've already ordered one. So you're going to want to open a Chrome tab. For Chrome, and then go to Betaflight Configurator. Uh, and it, it was removed from Chrome a while ago, but let's see, enable this item, launch app. Um, you're gonna see that it's out of date. That's not important, so just close that. I've already got my flight controller connected. And so what you're gonna wanna do is go to firmware flasher. And then Let's see. Show, click show unstable releases up here and enable expert mode. Okay, yeah. So you're going to want to select these two sliders and then you're going to want to go down to maintenance 3.2. That's a really old version of Betaflight and that's like all that's supported on this flight controller because this flight controller is really old. Um, and then you're going to choose a board and so you're going to go to beta flight f3 that is the name of the flight controller um, and then we're just going to go to the most recent firmware and then you go down here to load firmware online and so it's going to load it and then you click this flash button and it's going to appear at the top it's going to switch this to a dfu status and then it'll flash it if it switches to DFU and then stops, um, you might have to unplug the flight controller and then plug it back in while holding the uh, bootloader button. And then it should let you uh, flash it. But then once it's flashed, then you won't have to touch this again. Um, and then it'll be ready to connect to BL Heli. Okay, um, and, and again, the, the flight controller, it's kind of seeming like it might be a little too convoluted for some people. Um, so it might be better to go with, you know, the recommended options that are on the GitHub guide for configuring the AM32. All right, guys. Yeah, just wanted to add that really quick. And uh, thanks for watching.